Has NVIDIA done to deep learning development what the invention of code editors in the 1990s did to software development? Maybe so. Let's find out. Before we go any further, I have two things to ask of you. First, if you're into artificial intelligence, deep reinforcement learning, all things deep learning, hit that subscribe button so you get notified when I release new content. Second, you definitely want to check out the GPU Technology Conference happening this April from April 12th through 16th. It's totally free. It's online. You don't even have to leave your seat. It features speakers from a wide variety of topics, things like um, artificial intelligence, deep learning, high-performance computing, data science, augmented reality, virtual reality, all kinds of awesome stuff. Go ahead and check out the link in the description below to register today. So what exactly is going on here? So about two weeks ago, a representative from NVIDIA reached out to me and said, Phil, we are fans of the channel. We've been working on something really big and we would love for you to check it out and share it with your audience. And so today the embargo lifts on the open beta of Jarvis. Jarvis is a kind of like a framework. It's really more of a uh, fully integrated end-to-end -end pipeline for natural language processing applications. As of today, it handles everything from text transcription, punctuation, virtual assistance, as well as question and answering applications right out of the box. Being a beta, more is planned. In particular, they are planning uh, a, a whole host of vision applications as well, so it won't be just limited to natural language processing. Now, when I say end-to-end, -end, I actually mean it. It handles everything from the audio input, the audio processing, the um, audio to transcription, the text to speech, uh, the natural language processing applications in between. It does all of it. And that's why I kind of address the question of can it do for deep learning development what code editors did for software development in the 1990s. So maybe you remember the days of software development before code editors uh, where you had to handle things like linking, compiling, uh, looking at documentation, um, syntax checking, all that stuff on your own. When they invented code editors, all of that got integrated into one simple to use platform and that really sped up the entire process of code development by probably an order of magnitude. And so Jarvis is really kind of an analog to this where they've integrated all of the stuff you're going to need to deploy state-of-the-art deep learning models under one umbrella. It handles, you know, uh, data input, uh, feature extraction, uh, pretty much anything you really need to get something going right out of the box. And it does it with minimal code. I've been playing around with this in my free time, and there really isn't a whole lot you have to do to it to get it to work. Now, NVIDIA does have a couple of very brief demos to show you uh, kind of the basic functionality of it. So let's go ahead and take a look at those. Well, if you like, I can set you up with an optometrist to get an eye exam. That would be great. Okay, no problem. Uh, we'll, we'll get you started with that. Um, I see Dr. Lee's office is close to your home. Uh, she's really well rated in our network. Is it snowing in Chicago right now? In Chicago, it is currently not snowing. I'm actually planning to visit there. That sounds like a lot of fun. What else are you planning to do while you were there? So in my mind, the biggest game changer of this particular framework is the fact that it has pre-trained state-of-the-art models. So these are trained on 7,000 hours of both publicly available and proprietary data. So you get access to highly trained uh, state-of-the-art natural language processing models right out of the box. There's no need for you to go out and gather data and to train models from scratch. Of course, having a state-of-the-art model isn't necessarily enough. You will have to do some fine-tuning for whatever domain-specific applications you are working on. So they've included um, integration with the Transfer Learning Toolkit so you can do some basic um, data gathering and feature augmentation, excuse me, data augmentation to take a relatively small data set, you know, maybe tens to hundreds of hours of your own data and feed it into the models to fine tune them for whatever niche specific application you may be working on. So speaking of niche applications, uh, that brings us to some basic use cases. So one kind of personal example is uh, that I used to be a process engineer at Intel and my whole first month of that job was spent trying to get up to speed with really understanding what people were saying. Uh, I'm not exaggerating when I say it was almost like a foreign language, like you get dropped in a foreign land uh, right into the deep end and you have no idea what people are saying. Jargon is, you know, all over the place as well as acronyms. And there were so many acronyms for everything. It was, you really needed a decoder ring to figure out what people were saying. 
Now, like all mega corporations, Intel loves meetings, meetings about meetings sometimes, meetingception even. So what do you do when you have meetings? You have someone taking minutes. Now, imagine this. Imagine you have spent the first 30 years of your life getting an advanced degree, cultivating an elite level intellect. You get stuck into a meeting and told to take minutes. Now, this is something that has to be done, obviously, but this really isn't the best use of, you know, an elite level problem solver or even a recent college graduate's intellect, right? You're there to solve problems, to help, you know, drive money to the bottom line of the company, either cutting costs, improving throughput, reducing defects, whatever, anything except writing down what other people are saying. And so it's not hard to imagine uh, an intrepid Intel process engineer taking the Jarvis system uh, and then incorporating in some Intel proprietary data to train the system to understand exactly what is being said in the meeting and then transcribe that word for word. That has the additional benefit that you don't have to worry about a human being sitting there trying to type, keep up with what's going on, trying to think of ideas of how to contribute because, let's face it, you can't you know, put uh, transcribed meeting minutes on your brag sheet at the end of the year to get a raise. You have to actually solve real problems. So you have to be kind of paying attention. You have to be probably thinking about picking up your kids in the evening or doing whatever it is you how else you have to do. And so you're quite likely to perhaps miss something that may be germane to the discussion at hand. And so having an automated system totally totally does away with that entire issue where you don't have to worry about human attention, you don't have to worry about anything except letting the machine do the dirty work of transcribing the meeting minutes. Now it's also not hard to imagine um, bolting on your own application for say uh, text summarization so you have the system uh, transcribe all the meeting minutes accurately reflecting the jargon and the acronyms used. And then you have another uh, bit of your own code that you integrate with this that can um, perform uh, text summarization. So you only capture the really salient points. Uh, or maybe not, maybe you want the whole meeting minutes. It's really up to the engineer at the end of the day, but it's nice to have the flexibility that Jarvis provides to integrate your own code with the state-of-the-art models to create new applications for the NLP software. Now, real-world applications wouldn't be possible if the latency stretched into the seconds or worse regime. So my own playing around with it suggests that the latencies are very, very quick, which you would probably expect running locally on my machine. But NVIDIA's own data with uh, their current customers where it's running in the cloud, which is really where it's designed to be used, right? When you want to run it at scale, you got to have a whole bunch of GPUs crunching these models. Uh, but even then, including the network latency, from what I understand, the late total latency is around 200 milliseconds. And that is exceptionally fast for sending data over the uh, network to a server to process it and send back the uh, response. Now, it's not instantaneous, but when you think about it, you probably wouldn't want it to be instantaneous anyway. Uh, so the whole point is this is supposed to be conversational AI, right? In the case of particularly virtual assistants, you want it to be conversational. And having an immediate response would probably be a little bit too much into the uncanny valley of artificial intelligence. Now you might think that this is a pretty big pain in the neck to get running and you would be wrong. Uh, in fact, this is actually relatively straightforward. You only need a few things. The first of which is access to a relatively modern GPU. This is only configured to work with Volta, Turing, and Ampere class GPUs. So if you're used to using like the uh, K80 GPUs on something like Google Colab, then unfortunately that won't work. You will need uh, the latest drivers for 60 uh, as of the release of this video, so uh, make sure to update. That's something I had to do. That was the biggest hurdle to getting this running was updating my drivers and dealing with all the dependencies that entailed. Other than that, you make an NGC account, which is the NVIDIA GPU cloud. Uh, that is pretty straightforward. It just takes a few seconds to confirm your registration. And then you can actually get access to the scripts. You'll need to install a command line interface tool to do the downloads, provide an API key so they know you're not just some geek off the streets, and then you are off and running. The scripts do all the heavy lifting for you. Oh, you will need Docker, of course. Uh, that's part of the best part is that they use Docker integration, so you don't have to worry about downloading all of the dependencies. You don't have to do pip install 50 different packages. Packages. It's all bundled in, in Docker, so that takes care of that for you. Now, there is one catch, and it's not a showstopper, but it is something to be aware of. So it turns out 
that loading state-of-the-art deep learning models for natural language processing requires huge amounts of VRAM. My Peasant Tier 2080 Ti's with their paltry 11 gigabytes simply aren't enough. It turns out you need 16 gigabytes of VRAM to load these models to enjoy the natural language processing functionality. Now for NVIDIA's customers, this isn't a huge deal because large corporations and uh, big research teams are gonna have access to cloud GPUs anyway, and so that's not really a problem. If you're a, an enthusiast like me, uh, then having access to a high-end GPU may be a little bit of a difficulty, but you can always rent some time on a cloud GPU provider to get a model running there, and then scale it up as you need for your end application. Now, you can still use the um, automatic speech recognition functionality, which I have done. It works flawlessly. Uh, it's as good as they say it is. It's pretty cool stuff. But to get access to the full functionality of Jarvis, you do need something a little bit beefier with 16 gigabytes of VRAM or above. Now, I've spoken to the engineering team, and they are aware that for enthusiasts, this is a big kind of steep requirement. And so they are uh, spending active research hours on trying to do um, some shall we say optimizations to the model to get it to run on a smaller footprint but you know it's an open beta and so uh, that functionality will come later but have no fear I'm going to do a full test on the Jarvis framework for you NVIDIA was kind enough to provide me with a loaner Titan RTX. I do have to send this back, unfortunately, uh, but I'm going to be using this in the coming days and weeks to put the framework through its paces and report back my findings to you. I have a few pretty cool ideas for projects in mind. Uh, hopefully I can get those off the ground to show you the end result. All right, so that's all I have for today. Keep in mind in the future, I'm going to have actual evaluations of the framework uh, with my own code. So stay tuned for that. Any questions, comments, leave them down in the description below. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a like or heck, even a dislike if you don't like the not so subtle Titan RTX Flex. I wouldn't blame you. I'll see you in the next video.